There we go. All righty. No matter what sector you are from or how big or small your business might be, you probably communicate with customers. Don't we all? Eric Ray and Dennis Steele created, uh, Eric Ray, excuse me, and Dennis Steele created a software company called Podium. And what Podium does is it makes it easier for small business owners to keep up with their customers' questions and comments. That mission has propelled them from a tiny startup to a thriving company, get this, with more than 600 employees. In just five years, they did that. Here to interview them is Co's very own Jeanette Mulvey. Now remember, if you have a question that comes up during the interview, uh, make sure you type that into Slido. Let that be an interactive tool that you use all throughout the morning, and we will do our best to get those questions answered. This is our first test, everybody. I feel like a proud father here. Do me proud. Would you please welcome to the stage Eric, Dennis, and Jeanette. Yeah! How you doing? Yeah. Welcome. Have fun. Jeanette? Welcome, have fun. They're all yours. Hi, everyone. So this is Eric, Hi. and this is Dennis, and they run Podium. They're the founders. So Podium was named number 52 on Inc.'s fastest growing company in America list for 2018. So that's a big deal. <laughs> so, and we are going to talk about what that growth means and the challenges. But first, I think it's important that you understand what Podium actually does. So I've challenged them to explain it to you, but I've also threatened them that if they don't explain it in a way that I think you understand, I'm going to make them re-explain it. So yeah. what does Podium do? Yeah, so there, I think everybody knows this, but there is a shift happening in the world where we as people, we don't like to talk on the phone anymore. We like to message. And so what we do at Podium is we are bringing all small businesses into the future and making them, enabling them to message their customers, message their employees. And so we're a platform, we're a software platform that helps all small businesses message their customers, communicate with their employees internally, and do it all in one platform. How'd I do? I think that was good. And we- Did he do okay? Okay. We use things, so number one is text messages like ubiquitous, everybody has it, so that's an awesome channel. We use Facebook Messenger, we use Apple Business Chat, Google Business Messaging, so all of these big platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp, we make sure that, these, that every small business that works with Podium is enabled to communicate on those channels. Because and and tell them some of the companies that are using your, your software. Some of the companies that use us, Dennis? So um, we work with a lot of different businesses, all sorts of verticals, businesses from healthcare, to um, some of the biggest auto dealerships. Wait, but tell America. them the big names. Um, Utah Jazz use us. <laughs> they sell tickets through, through our system by texting, just having customers text right in. And what other business? 1-800-GOT-JUNK, so, right? Yeah, yeah 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Uh, yeah, Lazy Boy. Vivint. And like, this is funny. So we, we've raised venture capital. And uh, we go, we have, you, whenever you're raising venture capital, you have a slide that shows your customers. And we show our customer slide whenever we go and raise a round of funding. And it's not that sexy, because it's like junk removal, or dentists, or car dealerships. Or the like, largest healthcare, urgent yeah. care facility in America. But, but people that, don't really right. know those names. And I thought cool, it was impressive. It makes up 38% of the right. GDP, like all of those businesses. So yeah, we, we don't work with like American Express, but we work with 40,000 businesses that basically run America. Right. So we're, we're really proud of it. I was impressed. Yeah. So OK, so let's just kind of talk about your stats. So you said you raised venture capital, $92 million? Yeah. OK. Um, so you started in 2014? Yes. Just the two of you? Just us. Yes. In an apartment? Yes. Yeah. And, and before you started, you had to take a, po a coding boot camp together. Yeah, so I have a computer science background from school, and Dennis uh, has an advertising and marketing background. And we were starting Podium. We were starting the software company. And we kind of looked around and thought, both of us should have at least know how to build software so that we can contribute. And so while we were starting Podium out of the spare bedroom of my apartment, we both went to this coding boot camp. So we'd like wake up at 7 a.m., work all day long, uh, sell the product, train people on it, run billing, all this stuff. And then at like 5 p.m., we'd get in the car and we'd book it down to this coding boot camp in Provo, Utah. And we'd go from like 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every night for like three months. And we'd go on Saturdays, I think, for the full day. Yeah. And we did that because we just wanted to, 
wanted both of us to have the knowledge that we needed to actually build our business. Yeah. Sure. And at the time, we were sharing a desk in the apartment right. office. So, so that was in 2014. Yeah. In 2018, you had $60 million in sales. Yep. yep. 600 employees. Yep. And 125,000 square foot headquarters in Lehigh. That's right. And you are now building your second 125,000 square foot building, not because you're moving from one to the other, but because you're going to use both. And you're hiring about 60 employees every two weeks? Uh, not 60 every two weeks. We're hiring about 25 every oh, two weeks. Oh, sorry, yeah. right. That's still, still a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. So I want to talk, I think, even though the people in this room may not be at this level of growth, I imagine that the challenges are somewhat similar. So I think let's first talk about the hiring because when I, so there's an article on Co about these guys and so I interviewed them for that article. And I was just curious how, uh, every, the number one problem I hear from people running businesses is how difficult it is to hire, especially here where I know that the employment market is very difficult to hire in. And so how do you hire that many people? So I asked you that question. So, so you have a whole process in place and maybe you could just talk about that. Yeah, so we, um, we care really deeply about our culture and making sure that Podium is a place that people actually want to come and work every day because we think that, I mean, we both had jobs before we started Podium and we just thought like the majority of businesses aren't, you, you, like most people don't love going into work every day. That's just a sad fact and so, when we hire people, we focus on making sure that they fit the culture and that they can actually expand and like enrich our culture. And uh, we, we make sure that like the skills fit, we make sure that the culture fits, and then after you figure out those two, the compensation is actually usually a lot easier. But um, yeah, it, it's, we have a huge recruiting team. We, we, and, and we just make, sh I guess one of the things that's interesting is we try to make sure that Podium is a place, and like we have a lot of perks. We have we bring in meals, and we have like ping pong and video games and all these different things. But like what we find people care about the most is that they can come into work every day and just do their job. Yeah, and hiring the right person is so important in the early days. We we would take a, a while to hire. Right, the right that's person. what you told yeah. me. Sometimes it took a and really it's, long time. And it's so time. hard when you have venture capital or just pressures of a business because you want to get that person in. You want to right. build a build a position, but we always found waiting for the right person always paid off. And when people say, what contributed to all the success? Because we did some, we've done, and we continue to do really innovative things, but there's other companies that see what we do and, and, and platforms that are similar. But hiring the right people and having the right team actually execute on all this is really what's made the difference. Yeah. So. You mentioned company culture and perks. So, um, we didn't mention that in your second building that you're building, you're offering a huge perk, I think, as a mom. So do you want to talk Oh yeah, about that? so uh, my, yeah, so, so we're offering, a, we're building a multi-million dollar childcare facility in our second building that's going to be like state of the art uh, childcare for our, our team. And so we're really excited about that. And yeah, we think, And we think it's great for, I mean, it's awesome for working moms, working dads, single parents, like parents with both parents at work, whoever, like, but what's cool is um, the reason we, the reason we actually like decided to do this is, um, so when I was, I have two kids and when my wife was giving birth to our first kid, she had like a major complication where she almost died um, delivering our, our first <coughs> child. And, um, so I was sitting in the hospital with this brand new baby that was like four hours old and they had rushed my wife into the emergency room and they were operating on her. She was losing a lot of blood and they came in twice and said, hey, we don't think your wife's going to make it to, we're, we don't think she's going to make it. Like we might try and life flight her to this other hospital, but uh, she's lost 50% of the blood in her body. And it was like this really strange realization that I was potentially going to be a single father. And I just, things started running through my head like, well, I'm gonna have to quit Podium. Like, I'm not gonna be able to do my job anymore because I'll have this kid and I'll be a single father. And it was just this really, like, interesting realization that maybe not, not a lot of uh, not a lot of people go through. And and it just made me realize that uh, I have it probably really 
good as like um, my wife and I are, have a stable income and like everything, we can have childcare for our kids, but like a lot of people don't have those same circumstances. And so when we had the opportunity to build out this, this childcare facility, it was a no brainer because we realized that like we want everybody that works at Podium to be able to bring their whole self to work every day. And part of that is by, part of that is like helping them with the things they need with their family. Yeah. You said the most important thing about hiring is the cultural fit. So that story and that realization <coughs> lead me to ask, actually, if you were to describe the culture at Podium, I mean, what is, what is the culture? Is it? Yeah, so I, we have three values that embody a lot of the culture. It's be a founder, murder drama, and enjoy the ride. And yeah, murder drama is a little dramatic, but it really does paint the picture of having a place that you can come and be a founder really own what you do, have autonomy in that, um, not worry about politics or drama in the workplace, be able to come together, focus on something you want to do. And the third one, enjoy the ride, is so important, right? So much pressure to hit goals and get everything done, but if you're not enjoying what you do, you're never going to bring your full self to work. Yeah. And so I think those three values really do describe our culture and what people are bringing to work every day. And coming in and feeling the energy at Podium every day, um, you can kind of feel how, how people kind of embody that. Yeah, so. and it sounds from our conversation previously like that the word has spread, right? So even though unemployment is very low here, when you post the job, how many resumes do you get? I think we get hundreds. Um, I think four yeah. years ago we would have known exactly how many we got, <laughs> but yeah, we get hundreds of applicants uh, for all of our positions. Uh, is yeah, we just. We, we get a lot of interest in, in people working at Podium. Yeah, so this commitment is paying off oh, yeah. in terms of being able to hire the yeah. right people. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely not easy to work at Podium. Like, we do have some nice perks, but when you ask people, they don't say it's a cush job or anything. Most sure. of them say this is probably one of the hardest jobs I've ever had, or I work, I'm work i working harder at Podium than I've ever worked in my career. But they also say, but it is the most satisfying yeah. uh, place I've ever been. So. so we talked about you raising funding, and the two things I always hear are hiring and funding are the two biggest problems for almost every business. Um, now, your funding came from some different sources, Y Combinator, um, Google Ventures. Yep. Um, so not everyone in this room will be going to those people. Some people will be just going to the bank or, or bootstrapping. But in general, do you have some advice about when you're looking for funding from any source, just what that process looks like and what maybe you learned along the way? Yeah, yeah, so we raised $92 million to date, but four years ago, we raised our first round of funding and it was $500,000 and it was when Dennis and I were just, it was two of us sharing a desk, spare bedroom in my apartment, had no clue what we were doing. We were just trying to make this work. And we were, we were literally selling our product door to door. Like we had the software product, which it was nice and it worked, but we didn't, we were literally just going door to door, business to business. And so when we raised that first round of funding, um, we just assumed we'd never raise any more. We, we, we really thought when we raised that money, and we raised that from some local venture capitalists here in Utah, Peak Ventures and Kickstart Seed Fund, and when we raised that, we basically were like, wow, we tricked those guys into giving us this money <laughs> because we don't really know what we're doing, but I guess they thought we do. Um, and so when we, in the early days, we just, we, we made sure that that $500,000, we're like, we're not going to get any more, so we have to spend it we just have to be so careful with it and only spend it on stuff that's gonna give us an ROI. Like we didn't, we, we now have tons of apparel and swag that we give out to customers and, and employees, but in the early days, we never made a t-shirt. We never did anything. Like we didn't have our logo on anything for so long. We, we shared a business card for like the first year and a half of the business. Like <laughs> we'd give somebody our business card and they'd be like, Eric and Dennis, and like we shared a Google Voice number. So we were just super frugal and then when we were raising money, yeah, you just, we didn't really know what we were doing. I don't, I don't know if we have great advice there, but we just made sure the number one thing we looked for when we were looking for a financial partner was the people. Like the, the, and it's even been more important as we've gotten bigger. Like the people that you raise money from are the most important thing. Like our first investor is a guy named Sid Cromanhook here in Utah, and he made all the difference for us. Right. Yeah. So we have just a little time left, and then we're going to take those slide questions. Yeah. Um, 
I just wonder about the process that you have for getting feedback from your customers and taking that information and putting it into play so that you're responding to it and develop, continuing to develop yeah. the product in a way that responds to that. Because everybody has that problem, no matter what business they're in. They have to listen to their customers and figure out how to give their customers what they're asking for. Yeah. So what's that, what is that for you? So at Podium, we use Podium. So one of our main features that we developed was uh, the ability to reach out to your customer via text message and ask them for feedback on their experience at the business. So important, right? Part of that was helping these customers get reviews onto Google. Um, and part of it is to just get that feedback internally to figure out how you're doing. And so we do, that's how we, that's how we ask our customers how we're doing. And do you have a team in place that's taking that information in and then thinking about, so what is yeah. that? What yeah. do we do with that? So, so we have our customer yeah. success team, and they're the ones that work with our customers all day, every day. And when they get the, so we have, we get the feedback. It goes into this uh, central place that everybody in the company can see. And then uh, our product team takes that feedback. They'll actually, when they get, when we get negative feedback or critical feedback, our product team will actually reach out and talk with those customers and really dive into what the problem is. And then what's cool is we. Are, we've become really good at making changes fast to, to right. solve those problems. Yeah, right. that's great. I think everybody can find a way to do that. Yeah. Um, okay. Look at that. We are ready for questions. Okay. okay. So hold on. This is my first time using the iPad to do this. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Here's a good one. Why Utah, and not Silicon Valley? Great question. Yeah. So, <laughs> I thought it was. So when we when we first start, so there, there's an so when we, we raised five hundred thousand dollars from some local VCs, we thought we'd never raise any again. But we knew kind of the next step was to raise more funding from Silicon Valley investors. And um, when we, we we one day got an email from a really prestigious venture capitalist in the Bay Area. And they're like, hey, we're going to be in Salt Lake City visiting some other companies. We want to come visit you. And this is like early days. Yeah. It was still just me, Dennis, and a couple people. And we're like, yes, this is our chance. This is the opportunity. So the, t the day came. They, they came to our office. And um, they sat. It was, it was like an analyst at this venture capital firm, which is, is like very low on the totem pole at VC firms. But um, they came in. We sat down. We had an hour. We were supposed to have an hour. And we were like, we had our presentation nailed. We had all our talking points. We had practiced. We sit down. 15 minutes into the conversation, the guy's like, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I've got to go. And he like grabs his bag and just like walks out of our <laughs> office and just left. And we never heard from him again. And we were devastated. Um, and, and basically, we thought, man, being in Utah is probably this huge detriment. Like, we probably won't be able to raise more funding. Like, that, that disease investors aren't going to take us seriously because we're not in Silicon Valley. And fast forward to today, we, being in Utah, is a massive strategic advantage for us. Massive. Like, there was an article just uh, yesterday or two days ago that talked about how one of the largest strategic advantages companies have today is if they can cultivate talent outside of the Bay Area because it's right. so competitive there. So we've, we, what initially seemed like a, a detriment being in Utah or outside of the Bay Area has become one of the biggest strengths for our company. Right. Yeah. The clock isn't working. Do we have time for one more? One more question. OK, hold on. I'm kind of tempted to make you guys talk about your trip oh. to Jeff Flake, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Later, Google Podium Jeff Flake Marshall Islands. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, OK, what is the average age and length of experience of your hires? And I asked that question just because that's it's an interesting question about whether um, whether you think people need to have a certain set of skills when you hire them, or whether you really just need the right person and you can teach them the skills. That was my interpretation of whoever asked that question. I don't know if that's really what you meant. but Yeah, so average age of our workforce at Podium is 28 years old. So we're a very, very young culture. 28? 28. 28. OK. Yeah. Um, average experience, we probably lean on like less experience. and. But one of the things we look for is early on, you couldn't even we couldn't even hire anybody with experience early on because people would come to this, this crappy office that we had above a bike shop that like had no AC or heat, and they'd be like, OK, I'm not going to work here. Right. So 
one of our one of our things early on was we had to hire people that didn't have experience but had aptitude. Right. And we've carried that on. And even though we're 650 employees today, we still focus primarily on aptitude or like a learning agility. Like, is this person can they get where we need them to go, or that can they can they scale and right. not ex not necessarily like oh how many years of experience do they have in, in the specific thing we're looking for right, right because what they know even if they have the skills today the business is going to change anyway right yeah so they have to learn something adaptability new. I think we are out of time I love you guys thank you so much for joining us this was a great interview and I really appreciate it thank you very much yeah, thank you thanks see you later thank you.